Really at this point, the best way to sum up Don Machi season four, it feels like one step forward and then two steps back because at this point, every episode you kick in, you say, oh man, it looks like they're about to kick the bucket. They ain't gonna make it. Oh, okay, we're actually doing okay. Bell will get poisoned to death, barely survive. I mean, the first part of season four when it ended, core one, literally our boy's neck got snapped and it looked like game over. The characters look like they're about to get swarmed to death. Oh, here comes the intelligent monsters to save the day. Literally, this season is all about breaking the characters to their absolute limits to then giving them that, that light at the end of the tunnel. And eventually, things will work out. Will everyone make it? We don't know. But even if they all do make it out at the end of this season alive, it doesn't change the fact the emotional distress, the physical pain that they're going through, and as a viewer watching these characters suffer fate sometimes worse than death, it makes for one adrenaline-pumping, fear-inducing season, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I do have a full live reaction to today's Don Maji episode available on my Patreon, so if you want to see my full uncut thoughts to today's wonderful episode, head on over there and consider supporting, because seriously, Don Maji Thursdays are an absolute treat. I do like what they did with this episode in particular, because in comparison to where we were at the last month or so, it's been mostly distressed. There's been very little carrots in, on the stick kind of leading us along. It's basically been like, oh man, we got bags under our eyes, we got a stress in our heart. It just feels like despair. But a majority of this episode actually felt like things were working out. We get the reinforcements not only with the intelligent monsters, but the adventure party that Hestia ended up sending to Aid and Bell, they got there too at the same time. So... Honestly, they were looking rather good. I said last week how, honestly, without the monsters coming in to save them, they probably would have died there. Knowing now that the adventurer party was right around the corner, it's possible that they could have still held out and maybe survived, but it still would have been a lot more challenging without them. So the fact that the monsters are more or less going to try to clear a path to get to Bell as they get to the next rest point, rest up, heal up, and then move on, things are a lot better. And honestly, even when looking at Bell, he was doing rather well literally one arm almost completely useless, he's beaten, he's bruised, but by using the attacks that were almost about to land on him to kill him, he was basically using letting them use all their energy to get to him in last moment using barely any energy to cut them to pieces. Things are looking good, and every episode we get more into the flashback of Ryu and her familia. Like I've been saying, pretty much when you look at younger her, it kind of feels like she had a similar drive and mindset to that of Belle. And basically, the way this arc ends, whether she lives or dies, will not only shape Belle's future, but shape her own. If she dies, obviously she'll be dead, she'll have no future, but if she did die by the end of this arc, it would be very interesting to see what would change in Belle's mindset and character. Would he start slipping down a similar path of Ryu and not believing everyone can be saved? Or would he stick by to make sure nothing like that ever happens again? But if they go the direction I think they're going to go, which is keeping her alive and showing her maybe we don't have to give up on that everyone can live and that there is a hero out there, as seen by Belle, then it could be very interesting to see where her character could go in the future. Though, of course, they have to end with the casual reveal that they're going to have to enter a coliseum. She literally says, oh yeah, we just carry on here, we're back on the normal path and we'll be saved. Okay, what's, what's the catch? insert dramatic bridge of death and it's just a ruined coliseum why do you need a coliseum down there i don't know but it's not like we're gonna have a bunch of cheers when we walk in it's probably gonna be filled with horrible horrible monsters we got juggernaut we got all these other crazy things honestly he probably has to fight the minotaur before he gets back up there Things are not looking good for him, but in comparison to recent episodes, a lot better for sure. This episode was action-packed, it had some amazing animation. Honestly, Bell's moves in this episode were really cool because, realistically, does he have the energy to bounce around killing dozens upon dozens of enemies? No, but by using what he's learned from people he respects, literally letting them about to launch the killing blow on him, using that killing blow to redirect it to them, it just makes sense that he was able to deal with so much. Though I think the coolest and most depressing point of the episode was the poison, because at one point they get swarm. It's like, okay, generic skeletons, they're not the end-all be-all. We, we, we can take a generic skeleton. Oh, uh, well, there's about a hundred of them, and they're literally sharp swords and sharp bones. Like, one wrong move, you're getting stabbed in the face. And the fact that then, like, three different other types of monsters come in, it's just like a rampage. Everyone's getting killed, everyone's getting shot. There's literally like a porcupine machine gun blast going off, and then one hits him in the shoulder. And when you see the poison start acting, this was brutal. Because honestly, similar to last week when I was like, oh, if the reinforcements didn't come, 
wealth and everyone, they probably would have ended up dead. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. It, they didn't have the energy to keep on fighting. Had Bell not had the unicorn knife, he probably would have died there. Yes, they had one potion left it looked like, but it didn't look like that would have been enough. As immediately it starts seeping in, and by the time he rips out the, like, the poison needle, and he stabs himself with the knife, at first I was a little worried, I was like, are you kidding me? Are, you, are we gonna cut off another limb? Like, we've had enough decapitation in this season, let's just chill with that. But the fact that by the time he starts like sucking out the poison, it already reached like the upper parts of his neck. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say, had he not had that item, that weapon, the unicorn horn literally saved his life there. And honestly, it wouldn't have been good. But that's what I like about this season. Some people like to say that, okay, if a season sets up something where it feels death filled and they don't commit to the death, then it feels like they blue balls you or it wasn't fulfilling. But I disagree. That can be something that happens, but I don't think Don Machi's going in that direction. Seeing the characters who are adventurers suffer and learn and grow and go through all this distress, whether they go with a hopeful end, a depressing end, or more of a middle ground where some live, some die, it doesn't matter when the content we're currently consuming we feel the anxiety that these characters are going through, and you want to see them succeed. If we see characters die that we know and love, it will be soul-crushing, tear-jerking, and of course, emotionally draining. But if they succeed, it will just make their victory feel so much more rewarding given the hell that they've been through. And I think that sometimes what shows like these with its viewers get wrong is that they think they have to just kill everyone. Like, no. If Ryu gets to survive, that will literally be a game changer for her character given where she started and currently where she's at, where last week she says she expects that she won't make it. Because clearly, she'll give her life for Belle. It's very much clear at this point. But it'll be interesting to see where they take it. Beautifully produced episode, sound direction remaining to be on point. Honestly, a lot more gory than I was expecting. Like, constantly things are getting cut apart, like blood splatter everywhere. The fact that we're in this kind of like gray, whitish tinge room, it just makes the blood or even the sparks of the attacks pop even more. It felt hopeful, it felt draining and just distress-filled, but honestly, I like the pacing of Season 4 where they make them rise, they make them crash and fall, they kind of rise, kind of fall, and right now it's kind of in the middle of who's winning, who's losing. But all things considered, reinforcements are on the way. I wouldn't be shocked if Bell's fighting for his life in the Coliseum, some intelligent monsters come in to help save the day, and maybe similar to what happened at the beginning of this episode, during the entire fight, maybe then our party comes in to clear the day and, you know, save the day and everything like that, but I guess we'll see. I mean, it's pretty clear I've been having an absolute blast, even if I'm sweating bullets just watching some of these episodes, but I love this season. Easily the best Dalamachi season for me, but let me know what you're thinking down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload on the channel, and of course, as I mentioned, we got that full live reaction available on my Patreon. And while you're there, you can also get yourself a video shoutout. So today, we got Third Dynasty, Aloon, and Alton Johnson. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.